Good evening, everybody. My name's Anna, and I'm a PhD student at UCL. I need you to look at this, please. Um, yeah, so uh, my, my PhD is in hydrogen storage materials for portable applications. But um, I've actually already done a comedy set on that, and it'll probably surprise you to hear that there's nothing else funny to say about that particular topic. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about something completely different tonight. One of those things is the things that I do in my spare time. So uh, instead of being cool, I write for a magazine called Materials World, or as I sometimes like to call it, that's the cover, some of the covers, as I sometimes like to call it, <laughs> Materials World. <laughs> now, uh, my articles are called Material of the Month, and in these articles I compile all of the best facts about a certain material. Now, um, despite my very, 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 very best efforts to insert so many innuendos that you can't even read it with a straight face. It hasn't been picked up by uh, the guys over at Have I Got News For You uh, for their missing words round. So, don't worry, because I've compiled some for you. Um, and I don't have very much time for this set, so if you can just shout out the first thing that comes to mind. I won't comment on any of them, um, but just shout out the first thing that comes to mind. So, car manufacturers have recognised how pleasing what is to the touch. Shout out stuff. <laughs> yes. Cork. <laughs> the industrial applications of what exploit their phenomenal strength, hardness, and stiffness? Words. <laughs> Incorrect. Carbon nanotubes. <laughs> Finally, I'll leave you with news of that. During the 1960s, paper was even used, there's a little hint there, as novelty what? <laughs> Doesn't have to end in do. <laughs> Nearly! Clothing! <laughs> so, Materials World is actually one of my uh, one of my jobs. I've got another job, which is organising space parties. Now, um, it should be pretty good, but I've still got to plan it. <laughs> oh, that was better than that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've got another job. What is it? I extract metals from rocks. How is it? It's awesome. Oh, hey. I've got another job. I have to collect two of every single animal and then put them on a really big boat. I'm pretty good at it actually, but I only got it because I know a guy. Oh. I've got another job. I work in a drinks can recycling factory. It's so depressing. Oh. <laughs> I got another job. I'm a <laughs> There's uh, quite a few of these. <laughs> so I had to write them down. Um, I'm a human cannonball. Uh, I mean, it was actually really good, but I've already been fired. Oh. I've got another job. I work in a lab with a lion, a witch, and a wardrobe. Uh, the work's really interesting, but it's completely confidential, so you could say it's Narnia business. <laughs> now, speaking of people who need another job, I'm guessing you guys all heard about Tim Hunt. <laughs> the trouble with girls working in science, he said, is that three things happen when they're in the lab. You fall in love with them, they fall in love with you, and then when you criticise them, then they cry. He also went on to say that he thought that scientists should work in gender-segregated labs. Now, as a female working in science, I put a lot of thought into these comments and I began to wonder what would, act, what would it actually be like if we did work in a gender segregated lab. And I thought actually, this would probably be pretty much a utopia. So you'd be able to walk up the stairs of the physics department in the UCL and not be watched by the steely eyes of the security guard as you walk all the way up. You'd be able to cry openly every time you can't find the right size test tube. <laughs> the instruction manuals would be read cover to cover and highlighted accordingly. <laughs> the collaborations would be made over gluten-free, uh, gluten-free, wheat-free, low-carb, low-fat, vegan cakes and uh, free tea would be on tap. We'd be able to hold doors open for each other, safe in the knowledge that no one else was going to be offended. <laughs> And maybe they'd even design labs suitable for women's bodies, such as work surfaces at a suitable height that we don't keep swinging our breasts into experiments, <laughs> knocking all of the test tubes flying, <laughs> fucking up another week of not working. <laughs> so this sounds pretty awesome to me, but then I kept thinking about it, 
And uh, after a while, um, I reckon without a few men around, after a while things might start to go a bit wrong. Jam jars would be left on the side, unopened because none of us would have the physical strength to open them. We'd have to cancel the summer barbecue because none of us would be able to light the fire. Getting paid 20p extra for every pound that we earned would uh, make us really competitive so we wouldn't be able to be seen dead in public without a sports car or a hot but dull trophy boyfriend. You could say that we would become material girls. <laughs> but it would get worse. After a few months, our periods would start to sink. And for one week in every month, God help you if you stole another woman's clamp stand. <laughs> so with sharp objects around, deadly explosives, it seems like a pretty bad idea because uh, we'd all be in grave danger most of the time. So Tim, I'm really, really sorry, but I just don't think you thought your comments through. So, working in science, in all seriousness, is sometimes a little bit shit for women. Um, and I'm going to tell you a story now about um, uh, an uh, instance of sexism I experienced working at the UCL Physics Department. And I'm going to tell it with the help of a few inspirational forefathers, foremothers, and uh, apparently arseholes of science. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ollie. You just fucked up my there. <laughs> so I'm a cyclist, right? Any cyclists in the room? <laughs> All right, so I recently got some new panniers for my bike. Apparently loads of people don't know what panniers are, so they're the bags that go on the back so you look like a dad. I recently got some dad bags. Uh, and to fit these dad bags on my bike, I had to put a bike rack on the rear wheel of my bike. Um, and so I decided to do this, stupidly, outside the physics department at UCL. Within 30 seconds, a man approached me. <laughs> Brill. I thought, here we go. He kneels down. Ah, it's totally broken, he says. Then another man approached, and then another. Oh my God. He says, the men all huddle together. Do you want some out there, love? Says the first one. Oh, no, I'm fine, man. <laughs> no, go on, let us help you. No, really, I'm perfectly all right. <laughs> but nevertheless, the guy kneels down, takes the rack straight from my hand, and says to his mate, hammer with these bolts, man. <laughs> douche one, says the douche two. How dare you take those Fleming tools out of my hand, I said. Franklin, I just wanted to meddle it myself. And it would be great if just for a day you could all just fuck off. <laughs> yeah. How do you like them apples? <laughs> okay. <laughs> said the first guy. That was kind of mean because we were only trying to help. Yeah, that hurts, said the second guy. Oh, guys, said the third. I'm tired. Do you guys want to go and get a curry? Or an avocado sandwich? Or other food? <laughs> because right now I'm worried she'll start crying. Are you calling me gay? Said the second one. Boy, you'll regret that. <sighs> said the third. I need a drink. Pass me that beer can. <laughs> So the, off the guys went bickering about what food they were going to eat. Um, so I was left there with my bike finally alone. Cock. <laughs> I thought, I'm drawing a complete plank here. I've, I'm afraid I've actually got... Oh, drawing a complete plank here. I'm afraid I actually don't know either how to do this, but how hard can it be? So I put on some Kelvin Harris and I got to work. <laughs> In the end, guess how long it took me. <laughs> I had a good 45 minutes sitting on the floor, rinsing and fixing my bike. In the end, I decided to oil her up and test her on my way home. And you know what? I did the job fine, just by myself. If it's a surprise act to you that a woman would be offended by this appalling behaviour, then for me, you're part of the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Anna Pajajski. Thank you very much. <laughs>